Yes, you're right. It's a very uh, roaring start of the year for luxury brands and luxury market. Actually, uh, there has been an immediate rebound uh, in 2021 where luxury market immediately uh, rebounded to pre-pandemic uh, levels uh, to 283 billion uh, euro uh, revenue as a market. Uh, this is a good opening of the year that is promising. So for 2022 globally, we forecast a growth between 8 and 10% for the overall luxury market. important is the Chinese luxury consumer um, where we are right now? Um, clearly, it was a huge driver of uh, sales in the past. And one of the big questions at the start of the pandemic was to what extent foreign sales, foreign purchases of luxury goods by Chinese buyers would translate to domestic purchases within China. Um, what is your outlook there? And, and, and again, how important is the Chinese consumer at this point in time to luxury? Chinese consumer is super important to luxury. Uh, Chinese nationality accounts for already 33%, so one third of the market uh, uh, before pandemics, uh, but now confirming its, uh, uh, its relevance and redirecting all the tourist uh, um, consumptions uh, in, uh, in China. Still, uh, the total value have not been back to pre-pandemic levels, uh, but we forecast that this will be back and will be repatriated totally by the end of this year or beginning of 2023. And just another question quickly on China, Federica, because essentially sealed borders and a very tough political environment for outsiders looking in. How are these large uh, luxury houses in Europe and the UK dealing with that operationally? Uh, well, you know, m most of luxury brands are made in uh, uh, Europe, uh, made in France, made in Italy. So uh, they uh, see Asia and China as a commercial uh, opportunity, so they are really dealing positively in these uh, uh, in this moment, uh, of course. Okay, and and just uh, quickly on the cost of living increases that we're seeing worldwide, it can ignore that. But we were talking autos yesterday and hearing that uh, luxury autos is essentially dislocated from that issue. So is that something you also see in luxury retail? Yeah, clearly, uh, luxury uh, retail has been very. Uh, very resilient, uh, very uh, overperforming, I would say, also as one of the few uh, discretionary spending destination that uh, is still allowed since uh, we cannot uh, travel and since customers cannot uh, experience different kind of uh, uh, luxuries. And just talk to us a little bit about demographic shifts as well, Federica, because I know you've done some interesting research into Gen Y and Gen Z and how the houses are keeping up with those tastes. Yeah, there has been a huge generational shift that be began already pre-pandemic, uh, pre uh, but now uh, already Gen Z uh, are a key target for luxury brands and luxury customers that have evolved their marketing ecosystem, their language, and their territories of conversation to keep up with, uh, with the new generations. And of course, uh, uh, if we think to the midterm, uh, also the metaverse uh, is a key uh, environment uh, where to engage also with this younger generation.